Hello, Compressed Air Enthusiasts. My name is Elvira, and today I would like to uh, talk with you and discuss the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, nowadays, we see a lot of misconceptions, misunderstanding how we need to calculate the useful work of compressed air. And to calculate the useful work of compressed air, we need actually to apply two laws. First law uh, that tells us, tells us about the transformation of the energy and second law that tells us about the dissipation of, um, of energy. But today we will talk about the first law. According to the first law of thermodynamics, all the technical work, thermodynamical technical work is equal to the heat transfer, changes of the internal energy and the changes of the kinetic and potential energy of the gas. This is, uh, this is valid for the closed system. And here is very important uh, point. So just once again, right? So all the work done by the system or towards the system uh, technical is transformed into the changes of the internal energy and changes of the heat as well as potential kinetic energy. So potential kinetic energy are usually quite small in comparison to others. Uh, and in this case, we can neglect them for the calculations. And we always have that Q plus V is equal uh, internal energy. However, we also work with the open system. In open system, we have a slight difference. So let's uh, see um, closed versus open system as well as what is actually technical work. So closed system, we have here the cylinder. We press the uh, piston. Uh, it goes down. The pressure goes up. Uh, volume goes down, changes, the temperature goes up. So this is basically our basic, basic law. Um, then we work with an open system. Open system is when we have the mass exchange. So the uh, border of that system, there is a mass exchange or work exchange through this border of that system. And this is basically most of the technical um, systems that we see in compressed air. So it's cylinders, uh, compressors, some other, uh, other things. So anyway, there is always change of pressure and volume and temperature. Pressure, volume, temperature are three main variables that we always work with. So it's essential, essential to remember. And in case we want to calculate the full work done by the system or to the system, we need to refresh a little bit our math from the university or from the school. And we just get the sum here of the pressure change in work and volume change in work. So we usually call it expansion work. So this PDV, constant pressure uh, changes of the volume, or uh, sorry, this is the volume change in work or expansion work, where we have the changes of the pressure under the constant volume. So you remember all the technical system, pressure, volume, and temperature are always changing. And uh, there are also, they result in the changing of the state and of the energetical condition, energy uh, values of this. So we work always with identification of the two states, state one, state two, always, right? Uh, we have here the cylinder, state one, the piston is up, state two, piston is down. State up, we have the pressure, volume, mass, certain temperature, and the, it results in the internal energy. While we're changing this uh, and we apply the mechanical work on top uh, of the rod, so we press the, press the piston, it converts into the technical thermodynamical work changes of the enthalpy. Enthalpy is basically transfer of the internal energy over the border and as well as the uh, changes of kinetic potential. But as, as I said before, we neglect it for, for this calculation. So basically, we have always the same thing, changes of the internal enthalpy or state of the from state one to state two is equal to the heat transfer and the technical work, the PV work. So very important to remember, technical work, it's not the um, electric work or electric power or electric energy from the compressor yes so so this uh, w it's not that so it's not also the mechanical work 
or this technical work of the pressing, the force times, uh, times the stroke. Technical thermodynamical work, it's the changes of the pressure and the volume. So, uh, so that's it. And this can happen under various conditions. So this can happen under various conditions. It ca can happen under isothermal, isochore, adiabat, polytrope, um, isobar conditions. What does it mean? Some of those variables, either the state variables or energy variables, they can be constant or they uh, can be equal to zero. And this is what helps us to make some assumption to this and to apply to certain calculations. So isobar is a core, I think it's not so interesting because uh, we don't have so much technical system where the pressure or volume are constant. I mean, at least like in, in our experience, in, in our system boundaries. Let's talk about the isothermal adiabat and polytrope uh, conditions. So this is, this is important to remember. Isotherm means then the temperature stays constant, but the pressure and the volume are still changing. So how it happens? It happens that we have the heat transfer. It means that the technical work, thermodynamical work, is transferred into the heat 100%. Technically, uh, it should look like that we press this piston slowest possible. So as slow as possible, that there is no changes of the, uh, that all this, there is no changes of the pressure and the volume. It goes all into the heat and the temperature stays constant. Isotherm doesn't mean that there is an intercooling process. Isotherm is not that we compress it without any heat exchange in the beginning and then we cool down. Isotherm means that the temperature stays constant during the process all the time. So this isotherm conditions, it doesn't exist in the real world because it has to be endlessly slow to compress it under isotherm conditions. It's very important. It's not cool it after, it's to compress it slow that everything then transforms into the heat or the heat transforms into the, into the work. Then we have adiabat. So adiabat, it is when the, all the heat stays inside. So basically we uh, compress it, temperaturize, and then there, there is no heat dissipation. And the polytrope is the real condition. So the polytrope is what actually happens there. So we have the coefficient and the changes between 1 and 1.4. So it is a variable coefficient. And at each stage of the compression, we can calculate the real amount of work done or real content of the energy or changes of the, of the enthalpy. So let's go a little bit in, again into the isotherm, adiabat, and polytrope conditions. Here you can see on the diagram on the right, uh, three different uh, uh, curves. The first one, the C curve, it actually shows us the adiabat. So the temperature rise and theoretically it has to, sto ha has to stay uh, constant, right? Uh, like theoretically it has to be um, on that high level of the temperature, but because it's not possible to create the adiabat, uh, system behavior unless we have an additional heat transfer to compensate this heat exchange. Then uh, another extreme is the isotherm, but it's still it's impossible, as you can see, to create isothermal conditions from, from 20 degrees. It goes up to 55, 60, and then it stays more or less constant. So this is the, this I'm talking about the real measurement. And um, be between this is polytrope. So the temperature rise, and then at some moment, it's just uh, uh, the heat um, dissipates. But it's only, only the temperature rise, also the uh, pressure rise. So this is very important. This is why we call compressed air compressed, because we compress it. What we're basically trying to do in the compressor, we compress it. We have the temperature in the high level, and then we cool it down. We take this heat away. So this is what happens, but the, the flow, uh, stays compressed. Um, the problem also of actually of the temperature measurement that the sensors are very inertial. So they, it's very hard to get the temperature of the gas because the sensors, they measure the uh, surface of themselves. So they heat up and they measure themselves. 
And this is why it's sometimes almost impossible to get them with the traditional methods, the temperature measurement. So here you can see an alternative method that um, I worked myself in the lab and developed. So this is basically, um, I will not go into the details of the method, but uh, here you also can see uh, the compression inside the cylinder. You see the blue line, it's the measurement. So it was the compressed um, air goes until 90 degrees, then it cools down. But it's uh, it's not an isothermal process, so it's a, it's closer to adiabatic, polytropic. The same thing happens also in the compressor, right? So the temperature ri rise, and then we, then we cool it down. So we have the intercooler stages. And now we go to the compressor itself. So what it actually means, everything. It means that um, this is our basic equation for the calculate the full uh, technical energy that or the shaft shaft work uh, we need to understand that we have the changes of the enthalpy results in the heat exchange and this shaft work so if you want to calculate the content uh, the the usable work done uh, by the compressor uh, we take the polytropic system behavior of this and then we analyze the uh, heat exchange also after this. So it's um, it's not that the heat is equal to the shaft work because first of all, the isothermal is not possible to do. Second of all, it's an open system where we see that the, the energy, the work done by this shaft changes the enthalpy content inside the system. So basically this internal energy and also results in the heat exchange. However, it is not yet the efficiency of compressed air. So the efficiency of compressed air, so we, here we can also see the energy balance. To calculate the efficiency of compressed air, we need to see the exergy balance. Exergy balance, it is the energy, the full energy that was produced du during this, transformed from the electrical, from the mechanical work into the technical work, enthalpy change in the heat. And then we need to see what part of the heat of this technical work of this enthalpy is dissipated and the rest of this it is the useful energy of compressed air that the, then later on used for the processes so this is basically the ability of the system to perform per perform uh, thermodynamic performance of the system i hope it was clear and uh, in the next video we will talk about actual performance of compressed air system we we'll also see the sanky diagrams um, of the full system from the compressor until to the actuator and discuss about the exergy and the entropy generation because it is an essential topic to understand the performance of the system. Thank you.